Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, May 4th, and I have this really cool ship or something, some sort. I use it as my thumbnail today. This might have something to do with today. You might have to ask Mr. Matt about this, but I, I found this in Henry's Legos. I thought it was really cool. So, yeah, think about that. <laughs> well, guess what? It is Monday, May the 4th, and I have some welcomes and announcements. So the first thing, uh, apparently I was told by a parent right down the hall that uh, I messed up on the day for a field trip in the belated Saturday Digest. So the Saturday Digest, uh, which came out on Sunday, which is kind of a new tradition here, uh, said that the field trip was on May 8th, it's on May 7th, and the rest of the information is correct. Uh, I will say this, uh, middle schoolers will be talking to you. Uh, most likely on that day, I will be meeting with you all uh, at 11, while Mr. Matt meets with the sixth graders that day. So that looks like that's gonna be the case. So uh, middle schoolers look out on Thursday. We'll have it up on the board here as a schedule change for Thursday to make sure we're getting our history content that we need. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for our virtual field trip. I've never done a virtual field trip before. <laughs> so I'm actually kind of excited to see what's gonna happen. Uh, yeah, other news. So yeah, tonight I will be sending an email invite to sixth and eighth grade parents about uh, graduation ideas. It's that time, it, it hit me. It usually hits me about this time of the year when I look at the calendar and I say, oh my Lord, we only have X amount of weeks left. We only have three weeks left of official school. Now, we don't know what this means with respect to how we're gonna move forward into the summer, but with respect to official school, we only have three weeks left. And uh, this is the time of year when uh, the reality of saying goodbye to eighth graders and everything really starts to hit home. So yeah, I. Uh, it's uh, all the reality is starting to set in for me with respect to the end of the school year. So I've been really excited to have been able to take uh, everything online with you the way we have and to maintain our community. But uh, yeah, the reality hit me pretty hard. And uh, yeah, well, I should stop thinking about it now because <laughs> that won't end well for anyone. So Zoom meeting tonight to discuss graduation options for uh, sixth and eighth graders. So look for that invite about five to 10 minutes before. So I was looking at the days of the day today. There's a lot of days of the day today. Uh, there's one, there's there's some national day today that involves this, this spaceship or something. I think Mr. Matt may talk about it. I'm not sure. If you want to let me know, that's great. Uh, over the text or the emails, that's great. But it is May the 4th. So there you have it. Uh, it is also National Bird Day, so in honor of National Bird Day, I hear some birds outside today. In honor of National Bird Day, I've got some bird riddles for you today. Uh, yeah, the really interesting thing is, is that uh, on the, uh, the website it said, today is a day to go look and listen to the birds, figure out what birds live in your area. That's a really cool one, what birds are native to this part of the country. And we've got the, the founder of the uh, National Bird Day is Charles Almanzo Babcock, who was the superintendent of a school in Oil City, uh, Pennsylvania, superintendent in 1894. He's the one that came up with National Bird Day. I'm also reminded of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. What would it be like waking up and not hearing the birds? What would it be like to have a Silent Spring? And of course, her book, Silent Spring, is uh, very important for the environmental movement. So today's a day to go listen to the birds and look at the birds outside. So if you can do that, that would be awesome. It's also National Renewal Day. And I thought uh, the quote that I chose today is from Horace Mann, the, known as the, uh, the uh, I guess you could call him the pioneer, the, the founder of the public school system in the United States. Uh, I chose a quote from him today that reflects this focus on renewal. So renewal, habit is a cable, we have a thread of it, we, we weave a thread of it each day and at last we cannot break it from Horace Mann. I like this one. So habit is a cable, we, we weave a thread of it each day and at last we cannot break it. What does that mean? It's all about building those habits, kids. So that is a quote from Horace Mann and I found that particularly relevant today as it is National Renewal Day. 
put this back here. I've got a new, in addition to, of course, Charmander and his clones here, I've got the new, what I'm calling the Daily Dingbat. So let me hold this up for you in case you want to take a look at it. As soon as I saw this one, I knew that it had to be something that I did. So this is a phrase. Let's see if you can get that. But this is the Daily Dingbat. I'll be checking the text message and emails for that later. So, yeah, today's National Renewal Day. It's a great time to refresh your outlook on life. Spring is a great time to sort of reconsider your life and think about what can I do better and what can I change? Change your point of view. Um, do you want to revive an old hobby or something that you used to do and that you're really thinking, man, I really want to get back into that? So, it's National Renewal Day. So, this is a day to think about renewing yourself, forming new habits, getting into uh, a new routine. So, this is a great time to think about that as it's spring, and of course the quote of the day reflects that, getting into new patterns with changing your habits. So there you have it there. It is also National Weather Observers Day, so storm spotters, weather observers in general. Um, what you could also do is go out and look at the clouds a little bit today. Um, if there are clouds, it's a little chilly outside today. Um, but. What are the different clouds type, cloud types and what they represent? What sort of weather do they do they bring with them? You know, cumulonimbus, for example, is a storm cloud. So it's National Weather Observers Day. And again, it's nagging at me, but there's still this, there's something about today that is really important and interesting in pop culture, and I just can't wrap my head around my head around it. So yeah, let's think about that. Um, all right, so today, birthdays, yes. So in 1796. Horace Mann, um, the pioneer of the public school system, was born in Franklin, Massachusetts. And also in 1929, Audre, Audrey Hepburn, who was born in Brussels, Belgium, she was a part of the Golden Age of Hollywood and devoted, um, uh, she's, well, much of her acting, she's a very famous actress, and her some of her famous movies include Breakfast at Tiffany's and My Fair Lady. And uh, after her career in acting, she devoted uh, much of her time to being an ambassador for UNICEF, and she died in 1993. Uh, and UNICEF is the United Nations Children Fund, which was founded in 1946, along with the United Nations. So there you have it. I've got some birthdays. I've got National Bird Day. I think <laughs> you're going to like my bird riddles. Some of them are silly. Um, National Renewal Day. This is really important. Uh, National Weather Observers Day, and then that one nagging day that uh, we'll have to think about. Maybe I'm going to put this over here by Charmander and his friends. Don't worry, guys. Uh, I'm not going to block you too much there. All right. So there you have it. All right. So, of course, Charmander and his clones have the Charmander Challenge out today. I have the Daily Dingbat. Um, and I have some bird riddles for you. Let's see here. To review, uh, sometimes I find uh, when I look at my analytics that sometimes people come to line time a little bit later. So what I wanted to do right now, because we do have some important announcements, is to repeat my announcements before I go to the text messages and the emails. Um, there was an error in the Saturday, <laughs> Sunday digest where I put that uh, the field trip, the virtual field trip to Sweet Farm was on May 8th. It's actually on May 7th, Thursday, May 7th at 1 p.m. and I will be rescheduling the middle schoolers to meet with me during that at 11 while Mr. Matt meets with the sixth graders at 11 that day. So middle schoolers, seventh and eighth graders, you'll be meeting with me at 11 on Thursday and then we'll all meet together. I'm going to send an invite to all the kids for Sweet Farm and I'll do my best to moderate that. I've never done a virtual field trip nor have I moderated a Zoom meeting with, uh, uh, you know, 30, close to 40 kids. So we'll see. All right. Also tonight, Zoom meeting, sixth and eighth grade parents look for a Zoom invite. Uh, if you don't want to come, that's great. If you do, uh, I would love to have you join our conversation to talk about graduation. There's a lot of ideas out there. A lot of ideas. Uh, I'm actually going to be talking to Miss Debbie later this afternoon about some of her ideas and she's been talking to her lower elementary community. So uh, keep in mind that we've got to figure something out that's going to work for us and is going to celebrate our graduates. So I hope you guys like those pictures that I posted on the uh, Google Classroom. Uh, thank you to Miss Debbie and her friends for go ahead and, and doing that for all, all of us, for the entire community. We really appreciate that. So thank you very much. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the text messages and the, oh, I've got a fourth grader who, thank you. The first text I got, thank you. You're letting me know what today is, but I don't want to spoil it. I want to let Mr. Matt talk about this today because now that I now that I get it, now I know why this is going to be so, because I think this is really, like this is something he really loves. So this is awesome. So thank you, fourth grader. I really appreciate that. Uh, I've got a fourth grader coming in. Man, yes, the same information. You guys are really on top of your game. Uh, but unfortunately, I have to say about the, the cars, I just had a fifth grader come in over the email just right immediately. Correct. You are certainly correct. Um, I've got a fifth grader coming in at first with the incorrect answer, but with the correct. answer to the Daily Dingbat. And then he came in with the Correct. answer to <laughs> the uh, Charmander Challenge and the Daily Big Bet. So great job. So I have to do a double here, right? Correct. There you go. I love doing that. Let's go to the emails before I go here. Uh, let's see here. I've got a sixth grader coming in. Ooh. Charmander Challenge. Um, Ooh, I've got a screenshot from a sixth grader who is sharing with me the locations of all of the cars. Wow. I think you're missing one on one side there. Hmm, I think you're pretty close there. I, I, I can't show the screenshot though because people are gonna know where everything is, but this is really cool. I love this program. Um, but you are, I, I am, Oh, yeah, well, look, <laughs> apparently, there's something going on over here. Charmander, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to move things, but, you know, the people need to know. The people need to know, so I'm sorry. All right. Yep, fifth grader, you are. Uh, but fifth grader, you are, I am very about the Daily Dingbat. Let's see here. And sixth grader, uh, maybe you might want to take another look because it looks like I was blocking, and I'm terribly sorry, Charmander. Terribly sorry I was blocking that. So, <laughs> all right. And I've got a fifth grader <sighs> rolling in with the answer to the Charmander challenge. All right, let's go back to the text messages here. It's blowing up here. Um, ooh, I've got a kid who's been watching a sixth grader who's watching a mama robin who's been in her nest hanging a flower basket, or in the flower basket. She had two eggs in there on Saturday. Uh, he also learned that robins lay eggs, um, lay one egg a day and stop at four eggs because that's the best amount to sit on. So let me go ahead and show you this, the eggs here from the sixth grader. I think this is really cool. So check out these beautiful robin eggs that they have here. Awesome. I love it. And here's a picture of ha, the robin. Looks, looks like she's put her head in the flower basket there. So that's really cool. Um, thank you for that, seventh grader. I've got a fourth grader coming in and with now you are. Okay, very good. I've got a eighth grader down the hall coming in with uh, talking about uh, chess today. Chess is, I believe, this afternoon with Mr. Matt's after school class. I believe that is the case. I do know that I do not have Scola Tina this week. My next Scola and final Scola Tina is next week. So there's that. Ah, there's Mr. Matt coming in with, ah, chess is at 3.30. There's Mr. Matt coming in with uh, talking about what today is, about May the 4th. So, Mr. Matt, <laughs> I hope you have fun in your line time this afternoon. I'm sure you will. Uh, that's awesome. I love that. I've got a seventh grader coming in with all the correct answers. And she says that the eggs are absolutely gorgeous. I love that. Thank you for sending that in. I've got the eighth grader down the hall saying, chess at 3.30, good. Is that it? That's all you got? All right, so let's go back to the emails quickly. All right, uh, 
sixth grader. Now you are third times a charm. You are very nice. All right. Yeah, so as I wait for some more emails to come on in, let me go ahead and give you my silly little bird riddles for today. So these are really bad, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> All right. What bird can lift the heaviest weight? So what bird can lift the heaviest weight? And what bird can write? So what bird can lift the heaviest weight? And what bird can write? So these are really bad riddles, really bad jokes in honor of National Bird Day. So what bird can lift the heaviest weight and what bird can write? I do know that one of these birds is a real fan favorite of one of my fourth graders. I do know that much. That much is very, very true. All right, so I've got, oh wow, more text messages coming in. Um, here's a fun fact. If you have a big frog and a little frog, the big frog will eat the little frog. Yeah, thank you for that, seventh grader. Um, <laughs> I've got a seventh grader coming in with another uh, bird riddle. Which, which bird doesn't know any of the words? Which bird doesn't know any of the words? Ooh, that's a really nice riddle. I like that. Um, <laughs> I've got Mr. Matt coming in with um, <laughs> um, a, an answer from Sesame Street, Big Bird. But un unfortunately, Mr. Matt, I do have to say, yeah, I'm terribly sorry about that. Yeah, I'll go back to the emails here real quick. All right. So, yeah, National Bird Day, National Renewal Day, National Weather Observers Day, something about this. Really interesting. I think this is some sort of, like, spacecraft of some sort. I think that's what this is. <laughs> Henry would know more than I would, of course. Builds all these things. Let's get right here. Ah. Go double check the check text messages, emails again. Um, oh, thank you. I've got the fifth grader coming in and telling me exactly what this is. Um, that doesn't look like the ones that I grew up with, though. This one looks a lot different. This one looks. I know what you're saying from the from that movie thing series, but this one looks a little bit different. I don't know. So, but yeah. Oh, okay. So it's the new version. All right, got it. Thank you. Um, ooh, I've got this uh, seventh grader coming in and telling me more about the big frog and the little frog. <laughs> okay, really interesting. Ah, all right, so I have an eighth grader telling me exactly what kind of TIE fighter this is. All right, so, all right, got it, yeah. That's important to that to mythology. That's really good. All right. So, yeah, kids, um, before I, yeah, move into thinking about letting you go, I do want to reflect a little bit on uh, graduation and on what we're going to do. My initial thoughts are that uh, I want to do something that is safe, uh, but also meaningful to the kids. So that's something that we all have to think about. How can we do something that is both safe and meaningful and hopefully something that can build our community? Uh, I know that I have been with this group of eighth graders, many of them for five years now, and they are uh, the eighth grade groups. Uh, you know, I've known a lot of them a long time, and I've known all of them at least two years at this point, or almost two years. So, uh, some of them I've known for a long time, and some of them I've known since you know, fifth grade, some since sixth, seventh. Right, so uh, I really do want to do something meaningful for them. So let's think about that. How? What can we do to make memories and preserve memories? I'm not the best at this. I sort of do the things that I do. Uh, so I have certain traditions that I that I do at the end of every year. I'm going to do my very best to uphold those, even in this time of social distancing. Distancing. So yeah, let's think about that as we move forward. How can we best celebrate our graduates? And let's not forget about our sixth grade graduates as well. Moving from sixth grade to upper elementary is a pretty big jump. And how are we going to help celebrate our sixth graders moving on up into middle school? And that's an important question as well. So let's think about that. I do want to mention, I did get a text message from a parent today about, 
or was it? Yeah, um, there is, she sent me an article on how you can now download over 200 art books from the Guggenheim Museum for free. So <laughs> that looks like, and the, the titles go back to 1936. Wow. So you can download so much stuff for free from the Guggenheim Art Museum right now. So museums are doing their part and libraries are doing their part to make content available to us. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the Saturday Digest at the end where I put different information uh, from different resources that people send in to me throughout the week. But yeah, that's really important that, and really great actually that all of these museums and libraries around the world are doing their best to allow people to uh, appreciate uh, the content, musical content, artistic content, uh, movies. I mean, I know that movies have been going straight to you know streaming instead of being you know premiered in the theaters. So I really do think that is an awesome, an awesome thing. So thank you for that. Um, oh dear Lord, I oh Lord. Well, seventh grader, I I understand <laughs> what happened here with your big frog eating that small frog. We'll have to find a way to talk to our friend about what happened, uh, and it'll be okay because these things happened in nature. So it is what it is. Um, oh, I have a fourth grader uh, who's mentioning saying it's dangerous living for those frogs, but also she drew <laughs> a crown on Charmander and his buddies here. <laughs> really cool. Let me see if I can find this. All right, so come on, Charmander, don't ah. See if I can do this. So there's Charmander with a crown and everything. So hold on. There we go. There we go. Let's see if I can get that. Ah! There's Charmander with his crown. <laughs> Thank you for that, fourth grader. I love that. Really appreciate that. King Charmander. Ooh, I've got an image, a gift coming from uh, this dancing guy. And you may, may know who this is. Wow, thank you for that. A lot of people would know who that is. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, seventh grader. Um, let's see here. Uh, ooh, I've got a fifth grader reporting that their cat brought a bird home yesterday and they had to catch it and bring it back outside because it was flying all around the house. Wow, that is... <laughs> interesting and i hope everybody was safe and the bird was safe too you got it back outside that's great so yeah all right so thank you all for your participation today uh, i really do look forward to meeting with uh parents tonight uh I, it's nice to be in touch with uh the parents as well i know i haven't talked to many of you uh I am out here you know doing the best that i can for the kids and mr matt and miss carol as well and it'll be good to reconnect with you all tonight to discuss how we can celebrate your kids. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a seventh grader reporting that that is really awesome with the cat and the bird. Well, hopefully everything's okay with that cat and the bird. All right, so there you have it. Uh, I will say this, uh, I did give you some riddles slash jokes. So what bird can lift the heaviest weight? Uh, what bird can write? and what bird doesn't know the words to the song. So if you have any answers to those, you might wanna get those to Mr. Matt later this afternoon. But uh, yeah, so thank you all for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the Daily Dingbat. Uh, I, I love this one. Uh, I'll give the, uh, <laughs> the answer tomorrow. This is definitely in my wheelhouse. Uh, look, the Charmander challenge is what it is. Like Charmander just does what he does. The clones are here. So far they've been friendly and I've had no problems. So thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We look forward to having a uh, interesting and fun Zoom sessions today with your kids as we move forward with the different uh, works we're doing uh, this week. So have a great morning and uh, we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>